Good morning, church. So we've been talking a lot about 1 Corinthians 13, and I want to take some time to discuss love protects. I'd like you to picture your first day of high school again. I remember going into high school being nervous, being afraid. Uh, I had just come from being homeschooled, so it was an entirely new experience for me. But I remember meeting my classmates. There was one classmate in particular, uh, a girl that I very much appreciated and respected highly. And I remember first understanding what protection looked like when I met her. She had two older brothers who were upperclassmen at the time, and I was a freshman. And there was an unspoken but understood concept that to pull any shenanigans with her would have consequences because her older brothers protected her. And I have a younger sister as well. She is one of my favorite people on this planet and a person with whom I've been given a measure of responsibility. As her older brother, I get to cherish her and celebrate her victories. But I also have an aspect where I protect her. She knows that in my presence, I will put myself between anything that threatens her, whether that be an emotional threat, a physical threat, or otherwise. And this is because I love her. It has nothing to do with the fact that she can't protect herself, but it does have to do with the fact that my love compels action. When we look at 1 Corinthians 13, we're discovering more about what love means. And it's beautiful to know that God is love. I'm reminded of Mary's position when she finds out that she is pregnant, not by her husband, but by the Holy Spirit, with who would be our Messiah, Jesus. That had to be an incredibly scary proposition because marriage was taken very seriously back in the days of the Israelites. And it's got to be one of the biggest testimonies of love and trust in the Lord's plan. When you think about Joseph, Joseph was expecting to start his life like every normal Jewish husband, to have a big celebration and to meet Mary for whom he had been promised. Lo and behold, he finds out that God has other plans. And instead of exposing her, as would have been the custom in the day, he decides to protect her. She was vulnerable. Her standing put her at odds with culture, put her at odds with society and norms. And Joseph took it upon himself not to spread this possibly embarrassing story and situation, but to keep it to himself and trust in the Lord. Protection can look different in many ways. It can be physical protection with your might, where you physically stand between someone else and a threat. It can look like emotional protection, where you guard someone's intimacy beyond what you normally would. But either way, to love someone means to protect. I am so thankful that God is love. And as a church, we should be empowered when we realize that God's love compels his protection. Where God's story is in jeopardy, you can count on him being your protection. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just wanna thank you for protecting us. I wanna thank you for the lessons you showed me as an older sibling as I think about protecting my younger sister. You know the deep love that I have for her, and we know as a result the deep love you have for us. Thank you for your love, and thank you that it is a protection from everything this world has to, sh to launch at us. We ask that you continue to do this, and that we be faithful and trust that you have our back. In your precious name, amen.